Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Balkh in Afghanistan. If you hear tiny little noises in the background, the cat is on my desk trying to get attention. So we'll see if he makes an appearance in a minute. <laughs> there he goes when he's not the center of attention. But tonight, the center of, of our attention is Balkh, the Balkh province here in Afghanistan. Balkh is situated in the very north of Afghanistan. You can see here it borders Turkmenistan and Tajikistan, and it also borders Uzbekistan. You can see here, which is special because it's the only part of Afghanistan that borders Uzbekistan. Balk, for the most part, is quite uh, mountainy. Oh, oh, it's not mountainy. I suppose rocky and jagged. I guess mountainy is a good word. This part up here is a lot more flat than this part here, let's say. Afghanistan in general is a pretty mountainy, rocky country. But it flattens up here and that's very important because here we have the Amudarya River, one of the most important rivers in this region of the world, I guess, Central Asia, I suppose. I'm not sure what you actually call this. It's the Stan country area, right? This is where the Stan country is. The Amudarya is incredibly important, especially here in Afghanistan. But probably the most important river to bulk flows up through here. It is the Bandi Amir, and it creates just at the base of the mountains here. This big, almost like an inland delta, I guess an alluvial plain, I suppose. It forks out quite a lot into this area and creates rich, rich farmland. So that is why we have the two largest cities of Balk, the area is named after and the capital, Mazari Sharif. It's one of the largest cities in Afghanistan. Um, that's probably pretty much it for geography. All very important, of course. Let's talk about its history. Because this history is very fascinating. We're going to go to Bamiyan later in the month, um, which is also a very, very interesting part of Afghanistan's history. Can you see? Bamiyan. People have lived in this area for a very, very, very long time. The ancient peoples that lived there we call the Oxus civilization. And they would have lived here between 2200 and 1700 BCE. But the ancient kingdom that Balkh is the most famous for is the Bactrian kingdom. There's a lot of things that the Bactrian Kingdom is famous for, but if you're an animal nerd like me, you recognize that name because there are two types of camels, dromedary and Bactrian. Bactrian camels have two humps, like the letter B. Dromedaries have one hump, like the letter D. Bactria. So what is Bactria famous for? Bactria is famous for... A lot of famous peoples who lived here, probably the most famous being Zoroaster. We're not quite sure where Zoroaster was born, lived or died, but it's assumed that it was somewhere around here and most scholars of that time believed it was in Bactria, that this was the capital of Bactria. Zoroaster founded Zoroastrianism which was like the first mainstream monotheistic religion in a way. There were two deities in Zoroastrianism, a good god and a bad god, and obviously they worshipped the good god. So it wasn't a true monotheistic, but it was like the first very, very large religion that only prayed to one god. And they were big into fire temples always had fires burning, and um, it was just a very sacred part of the religion, and 
the other interesting thing about Zoroastrianism is that they didn't believe in burying their dead. They had sky burials where the bodies were left out for vultures to eat. Very interesting religion. Still very widely practiced today in certain parts of the world. Another interesting religion fact in ancient Bactria was that the very first two disciples of Buddhism came from Bactria. These two, I think they were traders, uh, stumbled upon the Buddha as he was enlightened and offered him some food because he probably looked kind of hungry, sitting there for so long, meditating. And they were the first converts to Buddhism. They brought Buddhism here to Bactria at the time. And Buddhism was widely, widely popular for a very long time in this whole area here in Afghanistan. That's how it was introduced. Bactria was eventually absorbed into the Achaemenid Empire. So, of course, when Alexander the Great conquered the Achaemenid Empire. He conquered the Bactrian Kingdom as well. And the people here were very unsure about this young guy coming and overthrowing everything they knew. And they didn't trust him. So in order to gain their trust, Alexander married their princess, Roxana. The cat is here. <laughs> he married their princess, Roxana. To try to make people more confident in him. Now, I can't read my notes because there's a cat here. Can you hear him sniffing around? Okay, bye kitty. No appearance on the camera today, I suppose. Just wanted to probably, hello, walk across my keyboard. Okay. Do you want to say hello to everyone? Let me get his tail in frame. Nope. Here's, here's his tail. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Alright, time to go, cat. Time to go. Right, usually he goes on camera for you guys, but he avoided it this time. Very strange. Also, this chair I have is very squeaky, so I have to sit very, very still. <laughs> or else you're all that, that, that squeak. I have to be as still as possible. Alexander the Great would die young. I believe Roxana did have a baby with him, but that was uh, he, the baby would have been like an infant when Alexander died. So his empire was split between his various generals. This area came under the control of the Seleucid Empire. But that fell apart quite quickly. And the Bactrian Kingdom turned into the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom because at this point, enough Greek culture had been brought into the region from Alexander, who is from Macedonia, which was part of Greece at the time. Or part of modern-day Greece is where he was from, from northern Greece. A lot of Greek culture seeped into the area. So it's known as the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom. That would later be conquered by a nomadic group of people known as the Sakas, who then were taken over by the Yuji. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. They were a Chinese people. I believe they were nomadic as well until this point. But they founded the Kushan Empire, which reigned over here. Uh, not for nearly as long as other empires and kingdoms and countries and powers have. Um, but they did leave quite an impact on the culture here. It lasted for quite a while. It was when their power was fading out that the Arabs would invade in the 600s, bringing the religion of Islam with them. But since Zoroastrianism and Buddhism and Ju Judaism also, was so widely practiced in this area for so long, the people didn't quite take to Islam at first. It wouldn't be until the 900s that Islam was the majority religion. It took a while for people to slowly, slowly convert, I suppose. There are many, many Muslim dynasties that ruled over the area this time. But that would all be halted very abruptly in the year 1220, when Genghis Khan invaded and completely sacked the city. Burned everything down, slaughtered everyone in his path. And the city wasn't 
this whole area, I should say, it wasn't just Balk, it was Mazari Sharif as well. All of the major centers in this corner of the world um, were sacked by Genghis Khan and the Mongols. But it was eventually during the Timurid dynasty that things started to look up. Timurid's named after Timur, or it's Hammerly. It was, I believe he was a grandson of Genghis Khan, right? He was actually crowned here in Balkh. And um, him and his successors would really spend time rebuilding this place. Timur really loved beautiful turquoise mosques. And so I'll show you one in Balk that, and, and one here actually, it's in Mazari Sharif, but I think Balk too. Um, I think the one in Mazari Sharif he built, and the one in Balk was rebuilt in his style, I believe is how it goes. This area was hotly contested back and forth between um, Persia and the Mughal Empire over in India for a long time. But that was all put to rest in 1751 when the area was conquered by Ahmed Shah Durrani. And he's a very, very important person in the history of Afghanistan, probably the most important person because he's considered the father of modern Afghanistan. He basically created Afghanistan. Before that, Afghanistan was a huge mishmash of cultures, and kingdoms, um, what have you, pretty much everything under the sun you can find at some part of Afghanistan, and he united all of them. It's still a united force today, for the most part. Today, Afghanistan is known as a very unsafe, unstable country. And all of the strife in Afghanistan really began in the 1980s, when the Soviet Union invaded. During that time, they used Mazari Sharif as a base, a military base, to launch attacks against the Mujahideen, which were the rebel guerrilla forces that formed to fight off the Soviets and get them out of their country. It was one of those Mujahideen forces that would wind up taking over the area after the Soviets retreated. And they opposed the Taliban, which was the biggest, largest of the Mujahideen groups that would start to take over the entirety of Afghanistan. Mazari Sharif is, I should have mentioned this, Mazari Sharif is the capital of Balkh because at one point there was a huge malaria outbreak here in Balkh. So they just moved to the capital to stay safe. It's stayed there ever since. But Mazari Sharif and the pretty much the majority of this Balkh region here remained independent from Taliban control in Afghanistan until 1997 when they were finally overran. Not long after that, though, the U.S. coalition forces would come in in 2001 and remove the Taliban from power. And you would think that that would lead to more peace and stability, but not quite so much. In Mazar Sharif, there were a lot of resistance fighters against the U.S. coalition, and many attacks against them and civilians and other people who supported them. Not a lot, but enough that it was considered not the safest place to go. The Taliban would immediately rise back to power in Afghanistan when the U.S. withdrew in 2021, and the Taliban retook Mazar Sharif on August 14th, 2021, and has been in power ever since. Although apparently the guy that they put in charge of the area was assassinated not long ago. So I wonder just how strong their power really is, but that's something we're not going to know until far into the future, when we can look back on this time in Afghanistan's history and really see what went on. And that, in a nutshell, is the history of Balk. Really fascinating place. Just real quick, before we head to the tablet, I want to say if Afghan history fascinates you as much as it fascinates me, 
Number one, stick around because we're going to Bamiyan's and we're going to talk way more about Afghanistan's Buddhist past. Um, also, I'll have my Afghanistan playlist pop up right here. And um, you can learn a lot more about this country because it's a really fascinating place. It's been nothing but tragedy for the past, gosh, 40 or 50 years or so now. But that doesn't mean that Afghanistan is bad, right? I always say there's no bad countries, there's only bad leaders. Afghanistan is beautiful. The people here are extremely kind, especially to travelers and foreigners. If someone comes to your home, you invite them in and give them food and tea. That's really the mainstay of the many, many different cultures in Afghanistan. Afghanistan's an umbrella term for the many, many different cultures here in the country. I just wanted to say that, just a footnote before we left, and I forgot, because uh, this country is really in my heart, and I hope for the best There was a big museum in Balkh, actually, that was raided um, after the U.S. coalition invaded in 2001-2002. Uh, I couldn't find it on Google Earth, unfortunately, but I wonder how much of it is left, which is so sad because, you know, it has such a long history. But without further ado, let's head over to the tablet. Let's go check out this area. Here we are at Balk province. You can see the red outline here. I'm going to start by zooming out so you can see exactly where we are in the world. If you're not quite sure where the Stan region is, boop. this is Central Asia here. You can see Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Afghanistan, Pakistan. They're just the ones listed here. There are more. As you can see, we're in the north of Afghanistan, and you can see what I mean by Afghanistan being a mountainy country. The Himalayas are not terribly far away, and many, many mountain chains spring off from that. And we get a bit of it here in bulk. It may not look super mountainy, like I said, like it's not mountainy, but when you go in and turn on the 3D, it's very, <laughs> very rocky and mountainy. Isn't that interesting? It's really beautiful just how far these this is what a majority of Afghanistan looks like. It is gorgeous, isn't it? But of course, the rivers running through, creating these lush valleys here, I suppose. Little oases along the river. But let's see. Here you can see that kind of inland delta I was talking about, where the river down from the mountains here. Let's put it in 3D again. You can really see. Flowing down from the mountains to where it gets very, very flat. You can see the Amudarya right here making the border. Very flat indeed. So here is where we have all of these lush farming sites. Then we have the city of Bong. Someone needs to tell me, because I tried researching this and couldn't find it. Do you see how Balk is built as a circle? We'll talk about this in a minute. As a circle? I know for a time, especially during the Abbasid Caliphate and a bit during the Umayyad Caliphate, which both had power over the region here, uh, they were run to rounded cities for lots of metaphorical reasons and defensive reasons. So I tried looking up to see if Balkh was one of those famously round cities and couldn't really find anything about when the roundness was created, but I assume it was during that time. So if anyone knows, let me know, please. But you're probably wondering, what is this over here? It looks like a meteor impact. In fact, this was the old fortifications of Balkh. I think I have to turn on the everything filter for its slideshow to pop up. Here we go. The ancient Balkh archaeological site, which you'd think would be a UNESCO site, because you know we're all about the UNESCO sites on this channel, but it's on the tentative 
list. Now it's been officially made yet. Look at that big sign. But this is what this ancient fort looks like today. It's pretty much just collapsed due to wear and tear of the environment. Views from it. But yeah, it is a gigantic fortification. You can still see some of the walls here. Some parts are better looking than others. But for the most part, it's just one big empty space, which, like it says, is an archaeological site. You can see some of the old walls here creating towers for defense. You can even see down here, this is the old wall of Baal. Because these rounded cities always had walls all the way around them protecting them. But that is all that is left of the ancient wall of Balk. Unfortunately, we really didn't see anything else. Um, for slideshows, we can check out this area. Just to see. No, but it's just babies <laughs> being cute. Um, but actually, I lied. There is something very interesting. It's Rumi. So, very, very important person in, I suppose, Middle Eastern history in terms of literature and poetry was Rumi. Very beloved person, and I guess this was his house. He lived here in Balk. I've read that this is Rumi's tomb, Rumi's birthplace. I'm not quite sure, but Rumi was definitely here. And sadly, this place is kind of falling apart, but you can see they have a roof over some of it, trying to preserve it. Save what they can of Rumi's house. Very beloved poet of ancient times. We can check out Mazar Sharif, here it is. Very large city here, and by far the heart of the city is the big mosque. Oh, I didn't show you the mosque. Actually, stop. Forget I just said that. We have to look at this mosque first before we look at that mosque. The green mosque here. So this was once, I assume, once a big, beautiful turquoise timurid mosque here, but you can see the facade has seen much better days. There's the dome in the back, which I assume is the prayer hall. I know the they still pray here, and there's a madrasa here too, but it has seen much better days. That's very sad, because if you've seen what these mosques look like up in, like, Samarkand, throughout Uzbekistan, throughout the Timurid Empire, they're absolutely stunningly beautiful buildings. It's very sad that that's what this beautiful mosque looks like now. But probably, if you really want to see what these mosques what this mosque probably looked like once upon a time. We're gonna head over to Mazar Sharif, which I've lost again. <laughs> Mazar Sharif to see the heart of the city. You can pick back up here. At the shrine of Hazrat Ali. Bam! Look at how stunning this is. Again, this is very characteristic of Timurid style mosques. The big facade here. The beautiful arches. The coloring is very Timurid and the super elaborate tiles. I know mosques always have very elaborate tiles, but it's like more elaborate than anything could ever be. Look at all the pigeons. And so this is apparently the tomb of Ali. According, apparently, I think it is according to Sunni Muslims, this is the tomb of Ali. According to Shia Muslims, it's in Iraq. Hot topic, I suppose. A very important person in Shia Islam. Pretty much like the reason that Shia Islam exists. To be honest. Look at that minaret. Holy moly, it's huge. Beautiful, beautiful mosque here. Look at this complex area. So yes, Mazar Sharif much better kept than Balk, unfortunately. But it is a very major city here in Afghanistan. These chickens, my goodness, that's a lot of, I guess they're pigeons, right? 
here they're probably celebrating Nowruz, which is the traditional New Year festival celebrated on the first day of spring. That is the f New Year in Zoroastrianism, and it's good now they arrange the chairs. That's beautiful. Uh, New Year's in Zoroastrian, and it's really just stuck around in this corner of the world as the New Year celebration. This is the shrine or the tomb, I suppose. The beautiful city that it is at night. Big bustling city here in Afghanistan. Look at these beautiful domes of the mosque. It's so lovely. Let's see. If the camera's wobbling at all, it's because this desk is not super stable, so I apologize. If you don't know, I'm staying with family while um, my... Uh, we're staying with extended family while my family is trying to buy a house. If you don't have it yet, then it might be a while to be yet. Let's see if we can find anything else to look at while we're roaming around. Let me pull up the borders again. Pork pilots. So we don't want check out some of these villages, and then we'll check out the ones to the north on the Almadaria. Let's see if we can find any pictures. Probably won't, because usually people don't take pictures and upload them to Google Earth in this corner of the world. Things that just don't happen, right? Unfortunately, I think it's a bust here. Probably. Maybe up here in this... Oh, 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 oh we got one, we got one. Kishan. Only one picture, but goodness, it tells you a lot, doesn't it? These little brick houses, just tiny little villages, people living their very, like, quiet, quaint lives. And then up here, you can see it looks like this river flood plain here. Let's find a village to look at. There's one large city up here. See how Mexico looks like a different country. There you go. Let's see. Calpa. Oh, how pretty. What are we looking at here? Some kind of plains. Maybe over there too. I love how a lot of places is just uh, selfies or <laughs> photos of just dudes. <laughs> just dudes being guys out on the road. But yeah, I think that's all we're going to get in this area. I tried tapping around other places, and that's pretty much all I got. <laughs> Looks like I'm not finding any more. Nope. Alright, so that's going to be it for tonight. So thank you so much for watching. Again, if you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. We're actually heading not too far away. We're staying in the stands. And we're going to head down to... See if it pops up. Maybe not. We're heading down here. This is Balochistan. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out because you're going to want to hear about what's going on in this part of the world. I hope that you've... In I messed that up. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good, 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 good Just mostly this Gucci store.